Hey everyone, Steve here from In One Sitting, a channel where I draw something in one sitting and share with you my journey of artistic expression and self-improvement. Love tap my like button if you want to love tap my channel. Let's get started. Today we'll be drawing a couple of bunny bears from my web comic, inspired by my fellow glasses wearers here You'll see that I did not even bother to pencil outline my idea because I am so used to, like I made it into a practice, a daily exercise to draw as many different variations of bunny bears as possible in different poses so that I can do this free-handed, you know, I will not be impeded by imagination. And this is still something a work in progress but I think I've went far with this so far. I've went with it so far. I've made a lot of progress, let's say that. I made a lot of progress so that I can do this free-handed relatively confidently with reasonable line confidence. As I mentioned previously, today these bunny bears will have some glasses because they are nearsighted. And I wanted to make sure that it look friendly. Put some ears on this this character. I call him Kevin or Kev for short. His ears are about the twice the height of his nose. I find that that is the most pleasing distance. Now I am drawing Charlie. Charlie is a different shaped bunny bear. They're called bunny bears because, if you're new to this channel, they're called bunny bears because they were genetically engineered. A combination of bunny and bears. So here, Charlie, Kevin's life partner, also is nearsighted in this comic strip. Single panel. I actually thought about Naming this panel, I'm not funny, you're funny. Something corny and tacky, but adorable like that. So Charlie is slightly shorter than Kevin. And I've been debating a lot about how I would like to finalize Charlie's ears. Currently, I've decided to make his ears the same height as his nose. And I've also reshaped his nose in a way where he looks or rather she, she looks more like a bunny bear than a bunny, right? That's the idea here. I want to make sure that both characters individually have characteristics of both bunnies and bears. Instead of when you look at it, you think, oh, that's a bear or that's a bunny. You know, that's kind of the idea behind this. Because they are genetically engineered to perfection. Now I am putting in the watercolor. So first I'm putting in a very, very vibrant wash. It's in fact a little bit more vibrant than I was expecting. I'm kind of going by the flow, going with the flow. I think that's the saying. Being very careful between the lines because even though I am using a relatively waterproof ink pen, brush pen um, it does I've noticed that it does blur a little bit right so I want to be careful with that the pen I'm using is a Tombow my wife actually bought it to do some fancy writing for our wedding uh, and that was a one-time thing so thankfully I get to use these fancy pens for my own purposes now, as you can see, I'm using a lighter, more yellowish wash for the nose and belly. The idea of these bunny bears is, in, in, terms of, in terms of artistic styling at least, I want to keep things as simple as possible. I draw a lot of inspiration from peanuts. in terms of artistic styling because I find that you know it's more about storytelling it's more about 
um, no distractions. You can just look at it and you're able to figure out whether you like it or not, right? That is the essence in which I would like to learn to capture. Similarly, I've done a lot of you know, research and learning about what makes a character successful. And I've learned that you want to make sure that you are leveraging white space correctly in that if I were to turn this character into just black, right, just a shadow, you would be able to figure out that it is in fact a bunny bear. That, my friends, is what makes a character original and significant, undeniably unique. Some examples you can think of more along the lines of logos really would be, you know, the Coca-Cola logo, the Nike logo. If we're talking about characters, you know, the ones that I grew up with, we have Animaniacs, we have Bugs Bunny, Looney Tunes, Rugrats. All of these characters have such a distinct shape that you will recognize them from their shadow. And that's what I find so intriguing. You add the simplicity with great storytelling, and bam, that is the secret sauce that I am trying to go for. I've added a little bit of shadow. I've um, tried to you know, glean from other people's artwork. Originally, I was trying so hard to make sure the shadow is the same shape as the character. What I've actually, um, what I found more useful, you know, more utilitarian, utilitarian utilitarian is making the shadow a little bit shorter so that you get a hint an idea that there is a shadow if you're chinese the idea is kind of east east right you just want to add a little bit of flavor in there east east I'm adding a little bit of color grading onto the bunny bears themselves so that there's more contrast. This is also something I'm trying to improve on for my watercolor because I've noticed that when I started, because I am very unfamiliar with the product and how wishy-washy it is, if you will, everything comes off kind of bland, mono, monotonous, monotone, if you will. Monochromatic, maybe is a better word. And even though this one still looks a little bit monochromatic, I'm trying my best to create that little bit of depth with color contrast. So here I'm basically done. And what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking about making this into probably a shirt of sorts because I'm totally digging this art. I love the bunny bears and I hope that you can help me make them famous. Hit that like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I look forward to hanging out with you next time.